Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, I come with the praise in my heart. I come with praise in my mouth. I come with the feeling of gratitude and gratefulness, Father God. Oh, I just thank you, Father God, for my mother and all of you mothers that have mothered me. I thank you, Father God, for the grandmothers and allowing me to be a mother. Amen. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. We just thank you, Lord Jesus, for a wonderful day for us to come together and praise your name, Father God. And just, just, just be grateful. For the gift of a mother oh, that yes. you have given to us. I've always said if the Lord made anything else better than a woman, he'd have kept it for himself. And I stand on that. I stand on it. Amen. And we're going to break it down for you today so that you have a complete understanding Hallelujah. when you leave how important a woman is in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Our, our call to worship scripture is coming from the book of revelations chapter 12 verse 1 and it reads and there appeared a great wonder in heaven a woman clothed with sun and the moon under her feet and upon her head a crown of 12 stars amen we will go further with that through this the service a mother loves endure through all Life didn't come with a manual, but it did come with a mother. Amen. Can I get an amen? Hallelujah. Can I get an amen? Amen. So for all the mothers in the house, this is your day. Can I get you to stand up and just give God some praise? Hallelujah. For the gift that you are. Can can you give him give him a hallelujah? hallelujah. Can you give him a glory? <laughs> can you give him a glory for oh, all the men? Happy Mother's Day. Who have made these women mothers? Hallelujah. Can we get a shout out? Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The first thing we will have um, our fabulous men chorus. They will uh, bless the Lord and bless us as well. Followed by the scripture from Sister Samantha Morrow and a prayer from our fabulous Cheryl Parks in that order. Amen. Bless you. Bless Amen. It's all right if you put your hands on it. Happy Mother's Day to you. Hallelujah. Listen if you will. I've been following Jesus for so many years. When I think of how good he's been, it brings me to tears. Oh, Hallelujah. Though Satan tries to change my mind, I can't turn away. Oh, no. No, no, no. I made a vow to the Lord, and I'm here to stay. Oh, who? You see, He's been good to me. Better than I knew He could be. Yeah. In each and every day, you can believe when you hear me say, I'm happy. In Jesus alone. Again, I'm happy, happy with Jesus and Jesus alone. Jesus alone. I'm happy, happy with Jesus and Jesus alone. So I'm happy. I don't understand, no, 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 no. Though I have turned away, he took me back in, oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He showed me unconditional love again and again. Live and breathe, my troubles are gone. Everything in life, since he took away the phone, yeah. I tell you, he's some kind of friend. I got a message to send and I'm happy in Jesus alone. I'm happy in Jesus alone. 
get the smile that's on my face. Oh, yeah. And Jesus alone. Ooh, I'm happy. Happy with Jesus. And Jesus alone. Let's take it all home. I'm happy. Sing, I'm happy. Happy. Anybody out there happy? Happy. So happy. Happy, happy with Jesus. With Jesus. Without a mention on the hill. Happy. Still, I'm happy. Happy. If I never see my name in light. Still, I'm happy. happy. If with I never Jesus. read a book about me. Happy. I'm happy. happy. If I never see my name in lights, still I'll be happy, happy with Jesus. With Jesus. Happy. Here's the reason why He brings me joy. Happy. Oh yeah, He brings me peace. Happy. He's everything to me, happy. and I'm happy with Jesus. I'm happy with Jesus. In Jesus alone, I'm happy, happy with Jesus. In Jesus alone, say it again. I'm happy, happy with Jesus. In Jesus alone, I'm happy with Jesus. In Jesus alone. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Mother's Day. Today I'll be reading Luke 1, 46 through 49 in the Amplified Version. And Mary said, my soul magnifies and exalts the Lord. And my spirit has rejoiced in God, my Savior, for he has looked on the humble state of his maidservant. For behold, from now on, all generations will count me blessed, happy, and favored by God. For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name in his purity, majesty, and glory. I've read Luke 1, 46 through 49. Be blessed. I'll ask that you bow your heads in a moment of prayer with me. Oh, gracious God, we come to you this morning, God, with thanksgiving on our hearts. God, we thank you for today. We thank you for life. We thank you for health. We thank you for strength. But most of all, God, we thank you for grace, mercy, and the blessings that you have bestowed upon us. Oh, God, this is your day. And we have come to exalt you, God, to give you all the glory, all the honor, God, and all the praise. For, God, you are worthy. There is none like you. And, God, on this day, we say a special blessing for those mothers, God. We ask that you give them peace today as we go about our days and share love with one another. And, for God, for those who mothers have gone on before us, God, we ask that you give them peace and comfort as they remember their mothers from past times. Oh God, we thank you for the shepherd of this house. God, we thank you for continuing to pour into him, to lead and guide his sheep. 
And oh God, we ask a special blessing for the woman of God who will come before us today, who share the good news, the good news about you, oh God. We open our hearts, God. We will open our minds, oh God, such that we may receive the word that she has before you. God, this is not about us. We realize today is Mother's Day, but God, we come to exalt you, to give you all the glory, God. And we hope in God that this day be pleasing in thy sight. Is these blessings and all other blessings we ask in thy son Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. 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 Say amen to that. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We want to say happy Mother's Day to all of our mothers. Come on, man. We got to working on some technical difficulties here, but God is still worthy to be praised. Amen. Oh, honk if you love Jesus this morning. <laughs> God is good. God is good. God is good. Amen. All right. We got any music going back there yet? Amen. We're going to move swiftly with our worship experience. We want to thank God for what God is doing today for our mothers. We want to honor our two eldest mothers today. Say amen to that. Amen. We're going to bless all of our mothers, but we want to take this time to honor our two eldest mothers. Kayla, can you get mama? Can mama come? Mom can't come. We got to bring it to her. All right. All right. My pool is, is, is our other eldest mother. My pool, can you come? Okay. Y'all put your hands together. Hawk the horn for our two eldest mothers. Marge, where mama? Come on, ma. Ma Marge. Bring ma. Say amen to that. Amen. I wish we could praise God for my poo and my mind. Don't they look beautiful today? Oh, my goodness. They got the friendship colors on. Amen. Amen. While we're honoring our two oldest mothers, we're going to bless all of our mothers. Amen. Bless you. Grandma Marge, this is my Marge, okay, all right. Okay, yes, you want to get a picture? Get a picture of our two eldest moms. Okay, all right. I want to get in that picture, hold on. Grandma is 86 years young. Say amen to that. Amen. amen. Mapu, tell them how old you are today. 78 years. Say amen to that. If you want to live long, praise God for 86 and 78. Amen. Amen. We're, we're coming around blessing our mothers. We want to thank our men's ministry. Mama, that's yours. Okay. My poo, that's yours. And this beautiful rose and this gift card goes out to all of our mothers today from our men's ministry. Amen. So some money attached to this, so don't lose that card now. Can we praise God for all our mothers today? Hallelujah. Oh, God is good. God is good all the time. We're going to dedicate this little song to all our mothers while we're passing out blessings. Hallelujah. God's going to bless you. 
He's blessing you already. Say hallelujah and how. Oh, yes. We love you, mothers. God bless you. Thank you for being here. A few of our mothers are out of town. So we want to pray God's strength, safe travel on them. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. God is good. You've been down and you can't see your way. You've been praying and hoping for change. Seems like nothing is going your way. Just put it in God's hand and get on up and say hallelujah.
bless the mothers to be. That might be some young mothers to be in the house. Let's bless them with a good God. And a young mother. Mothers to be. Hallelujah. 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 Say one more time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. is good. God is good. Somebody honk your horn if God been good to you, mom. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's giving time. Hallelujah. In the house. Amen. From we got a beautiful car from my mama. She sends it to you with love this morning. She just want to thank you for your prayers. Bless your heart for all the ways you find to be so nice. Bless your hands for giving help without even thinking twice. Bless your thoughts for knowing just the perfect thing to do. You are a gift of love and faith. God bless us to all of you. That's from Mama D. She's so grateful. Say amen to that. Amen. Dad is doing a lot better this morning. We thank God. Thank you, Lord. Thank God for all of our elders, all of our mothers. So glad to see you this morning. Hallelujah. Thank God for those who sow and you go to give the fine. Sow it that way. Hallelujah. Our ushers are coming around our men's ministry. We want to thank our men's ministry for providing those beautiful roses. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And those gift cards. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, brothers. Our men always step up and bless our mothers. Bless the women of God on Mother's Day. Amen. Amen. We're so happy to have our guest evangelist, Minister Lena Lewis. This morning, honk your horn for Minister Lena. Oh, yes, 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 yes. The great Mount Pleasant Baptist Church. There in Grove Town, my big brother. Brother Frank Lewis is the senior pastor there. We want to thank God for them this morning, allowing her to share with us. Amen. Amen. All of our May birthdays, we get back on live stream. We'll post all of our May birthdays. We want to say happy birthday to all of our May birthdays this month. Amen. Hallelujah. So you see, you can download it to our live stream family who's watching. Download it. Those here on the yard with us, God bless you. You can sew it that way. You can mail it in. Friendship Baptist Church, Post Office 2773, Post Office Box 2773, Evans, Georgia, 30809. Amen. Our greeters are bringing some envelopes for those who might need an envelope. Thank you so much to our media ministry who's in the booth. Amen. Amen. Lord, that's, that's brother, that's Minister Lena blessing. Don't let that get away. <laughs> it blow right over there next to her. Go and give it to her. She gonna bless us in a little bit. Thank you, my God. God blowed it right over there to you. Thank God for the beautiful breeze that's blowing. Amen. Amen. Family, we thank you. Hallelujah. We also have a fifth Sunday, Women's Empowerment Sunday. Oh, our daughter ministry, Elder Bridget Greta. I'm calling the wrong daughter. Elder Greta Bennett Mary going to be with us on the fifth Sunday for our women's empowerment. Oh, she's excited as well. So this is a month of blessings. Thank you for sowing. God bless you, Father. We thank you for every seed. I thank you, Lord. We thank you today for the seed of the mother. The mother who bare the seed, God, who received the seed, who birthed life. Father, we thank you for every mother today. Hallelujah. We give back to you because you blessed us with a wonderful mother. Father, I lift up out of May this morning, God, that you strengthen her and give her, encourage her this morning to hang in there and hold on. See what the end gonna be. Thank you for Elder Bridget, her father. Thank you for blessing him. Thank you for blessing Marge and my pool. All of our mothers today, God. All of our people, we give you thanks.
in Jesus name say amen to that all right y'all greetings God bless you thank you so much our men's ministry our music ministry say amen for them amen well thank God for our regular sound man is out of town brother Tim is out of town so uh, brother Donald stepped up and uh, we working it out say amen to that we working it out we wanted to get our mothers together on the yard this morning amen all right thank you okay thank you yeah thank you all right a minute gonna come back and bless you and then we're gonna hear a word this morning from a woman of God whom I've come to love and respect over 28 years ago when God sent me to this area my big brother her husband the pastor of the Mount Pleasant Church brother Frank Lewis took me in as a little brother began to mentor me made me feel real comfortable here in the Abilene Georgia area so we're just good God laid her on our heart to come and bless us on Mother's Day. I think this might be her first time with us. Second time. Amen. Honk your horn for Minister Lena Lewis this morning. Amen. Amen. So our men are going to come back and bless you. And then the next voice will be Minister Lena Lewis, evangelist. Lena Lewis, great woman of God. I want to thank Elder Bridget Bussey, who's been our worship leader, overseer of our women's ministry. Come on, man. God bless you. Amen. Sister Cheryl and Sister Pam, two awesome women of God, for celebrating with us this morning. Good to see Mama Naomi in the car. Amen. Hallelujah. All we dedicate this one to all of the mothers.
check, check one, two, check, check, check. Hallelujah. Come on, let's get the Lord a hand clap of praise. Oh, we can do better than that. Hallelujah. Because truly, this is the day that the Lord has made. Hallelujah. We shall rejoice and be exceedingly glad therein. Oh, we give praises and honor to our most high God and give recognition to Pastor Dunson and the Friendship Church family and to each and every one of you and your respective places. Truly, it's a blessing to be here this morning. Hallelujah. We thank God for the sunshine. We even thank God for this cool breeze. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. We would like to wish a uh, happy Mother's Day to each and every mother here and each and every mother that is listening to us, however, whatever. Amen. Oh, we're not going to prolong any time and we're just going to jump right into this word. Uh, but for the sake of time, I would like to encourage you to read Genesis chapter 15 through chapter 21. But I'm just going to read a few verses from chapter 15. 16 and then i'm gonna jump over to chapter 21 16 genesis 16 beginning at verse 1 the word of god says now sarah Abraham's wife had bore him no children and she had an egyptian maid servant whose name was hagar so sarah said to abram see now the lord has restrained me from bearing children. Please go to my maid. Perhaps I shall attain children by her. Then Sarah, Abram's wife, took Hagar, her maid, the Egyptian, and gave her to her husband, Abram, to be his wife after Abram had dwelt 10 years in the land of Canaan. We're going to jump down to verse 5. Then Sarah said to Sarah, my son, wrong be unto you. I gave my maid into your embrace. And when she saw that she conceived, I became despised in her eyes. The Lord judged between you and me. We're going to jump over to uh, chapter 21, beginning at verse 1. It says, and when the Lord visited Sarah, as he had said, and the Lord did for Sarah, as he had spoken, for Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age. At the set time of which God has spoken to him, and Abraham called the name of his son who was born to him, whom Sarah had bore to him, Isaac. Verse 8, then the child grew and was weaned, and Abraham made a great feast on the same day that Isaac was weaned. And Sarah saw the son Hagar, the Egyptian, whom she had bore to Abraham, scolding. Therefore, she said unto Abraham, cast out this bondwoman and her son, for the son of this bondwoman shall not be heir with my son, namely with Isaac. This is the word of God to the people of God. And for a subject today, I would like to use tears of a broken hearted mother. Tears of a broken hearted mother. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. My sisters and brothers, there are a number of verses in Proverbs that speak about how a wise child bring joy to the father. But the foolish child bring grief to the mother. And you might wonder why God emphasizes grief for mothers. I believe it's because God has put a special love in a mother's heart for her children. God created her to be a nurturer. It's not because fathers don't grieve. Also, but I believe God has a special place of compassion for the mothers that grieve. The sorrow of childbirth is often exceeded by the sorrows of seeing the needs of our children and toiling over their well-being. A mother's lot is often defined by her tears. 
I believe most mothers here today will agree for a long time there has been mothers there has been tears you know we cry at birth we cry at graduation we cry at weddings we cry when our children are in trouble can I get a witness mothers hallelujah carry a burden for her children we love our children and we bring a, a, a lot of joy. They bring a lot of joy to our hearts. They also bring a lot of tears and pain. And this is the case with Hagar. We need to know that Moses, uh, mothers hold their children's hand for a short while, but she holds their heart forever. Life is filled with detours and dead ends, trials and tra ch challenges of every kind more likely than we are used to. We have times when we are in distress. We are anguished. We are disappointed. And sometimes this causes us to fall on our knees. Unless you are one of those mothers who does think that her child never does anything wrong. But excuse me, at least that's what they want us to think. One of the saddest sights is to, in the world is to see a mother cry, especially if there are tears of, of sadness and disappointment. But sometimes crying is the only way our eyes speak when our heart can't explain how broken our hearts are or what our hearts feel. So our lesson today is a very familiar passage of scripture. It's about Sarah and Abram trying to help God give them a son by having Abraham take Sarah's maid servant, Hagar, his wife. And I submit to you today that God never intended for this to be, but he allowed it to be. They went headlong into doing what they wanted to do. But we need to understand that their decision brought with it much uh, consequences for them, and not even them, but us also today. Even with some of us, we want what we want. We will do it, go to any limits to get it. It doesn't matter who we have to step on, who we have to step over. In some cases, we pay for it for the rest of our lives. Now, during the era of Abram, it was considered a disgrace for a couple to be childless. In our day, many couples choose not to have children, and that's okay too. Others have the choice forced upon them by physical reason. In Abram's day, regardless of the reason behind it, if a couple has no children, they were mocked, they were looked down upon, and largely they was not accepted by the society. This was a society that also thought nothing about multiple marriages. If a man like Saver, Abram were to take Hagar as his wife, a secondary wife, no one around them would think anything about it. If the concubine would bear a child, it would be considered to be the child of the first, the primary wife. Now, in this way, Sarah could get the child she desired and be accepted in the community. And one thing we need to understand, mothers, we worry too much about what people think. During that time we're worrying about what people think, we need to be praying and we need to be fasting. Hallelujah. Nowhere in Scripture did God ever condone this behavior? He never suggested it, but he did allow it. God's design for marriage is and has always been one man for one woman for life. Now, back in chapter 15, the story uh, in chapter 15, God gave Abram that great promise. But Abram reacted, didn't react. At first, he reacted in faith. But as time passed, Abraham had begun to doubt. He, along with Sarah, 
decide that God needs some help. Hallelujah. Things was moving along a little bit too slow. They just didn't dream about a son. God promised them a son. Can I get a witness? We need to understand that doubt towards the word and the promises of, of God account more for our troubles than any other single thing. We can read what he has promised us, but when the promise isn't fulfilled immediately, we begin to doubt and try to find ways to make it happen ourselves. We never, we would, when we, when will we ever learn, hallelujah, God has always kept his word. God is God of order. And he, he does a run on our schedule. Hagar is an Egyptian maidservant, which means she was far from home. She had been uprooted from her land, separated from her family, and forced the bidding for somebody else. Talk about having no control over your life. Hagar had no control over her life. But for Hagar, things got worse. When Sarah couldn't have children of her own, she bring Hagar to her husband, Abram, with the intent of building a family for herself through Hagar. Now, can you imagine, ladies, giving over your man to another woman? That's another sermon. Hallelujah. All by itself. How many of you know that desperate folks will do anything? I think we all will agree that multiple wives leads to multiple problems. Sarah and Hagar are no exception. So the point is, the first point is, God sees us in our pain. When we feel we have no control of our lives, whether we're stuck in a rut, hallelujah, our things are spinning wildly out of control around us. It is then when we often feel we have no control over our lives. Hagar certainly felt that way. I tell you that God is not a God who is distant from this world and its people. He is not a God who wound up this world like a clock and then walked away and left it. Can I get a witness? He is ultimately involved in the details of our lives, and God sees our pain. When Hagar became, became pregnant, she doesn't handle things so well. The Bible says she despises Sarah and began to flaunt her pregnancy before Sarah. She got the big head. You know how we do it sometimes. And Sarah didn't like what was happening. How many of you know when mama's not happy, Ain't nobody happy. Hallelujah. Sarah ain't happy. And now she blames Abram. Abram doesn't handle things at well, at well at all. Simply because he gives Sarah permission just to do whatever she wants to do with Hagar. It's in the book. And the Bible tells us that Sarah mistreats Hagar. In other words, she abuses Hagar. We don't know what she did. She may have locked her in a room with no food, or she used harsh words against her. But the way I see it, abuse is abuse. You know, back in the day, during slavery, slave owners would treat their slaves in inhumane ways. They could do whatever they wanted to do with them with no questions asked. Hagar discovered within herself that she didn't have to stick around in this abusive situation. So she runs away, hallelujah, still expecting a child. So now, a lot of this Hagar brought on herself. If she hadn't despised Sarah, if she had just kept herself humble, if she had kept a humble spirit, if she just kept her mouth shut, if she just continued to be a servant, Mary Sarah wouldn't have mistreated her. But Sarah was still wrong for her action. Hallelujah. Because she was the one that started it all in the first place. When we are desperate, we can do some foolish things. But what happened to the part that says, treat folk 
the way you want to be treated. Hagar still felt the pain of being mistreated by someone else. Now, I'm not advocating or saying that it's okay to abuse anyone for whatever reason. But in some ways, it's good news to us that Hagar was partly to blame because it helps us to know that even when we have contributed to our own pain, even when we are showed out ourselves, God still sees us and cares about us. Here is an expectant mother, hurt, disappointed, and mad headed home back to Egypt. How many of you know that God does not only seize pain, hallelujah, but he also intervenes. Dada Peeper says he's an on-time God. Yes, he is. I'm reminded of another songwriter that says, God has always stood by my side. He has always been my guide. When I was too weak to carry on, he gave me strength, hallelujah, and made me strong. He has always stood by my side. God is a good God, I tell you. There may be a mother here this morning, hallelujah, that needs an intervention from the Lord. Child strung out on drugs. A child headed to jail. A child dealing with terminal illness. Or maybe you just don't know where your child is right now. Hallelujah. Somebody know what I'm talking about. It's nothing to be ashamed of as long as you know you did the best as you could as a mother. Just because we teach our children the right road to travel, it doesn't mean they're going to always follow it. The Bible says an angel of the Lord find Hagar near a spring in the desert. And I wonder how far she thought she could get traveling alone in a desert. So the angel of the Lord said, where have you come from and where are you going? Hagar's only answer could be, I'm running away, running from my problem. But running away doesn't solve problems. We have to face them head on sooner or later. God sometimes calls us to account in our wandering from his perfect will. Hagar's reaction to Sarah's mistreatment is a predictable human response, but God's plan is different than hers. It doesn't matter how bad your situation gets. The Bible says, and it lets us know that all things work together. Hallelujah. For the good of them that love the Lord to them who are called according to his purpose. The past continuously haunts thousands of women every day, often trapping them in the present, victims of rape, abuse, and a rejection, trying to raise children, hallelujah, against the backdrop of crippling poverty, fighting to provide for their families through sickness and hopeless situations situations. For many of us today, it may seem like we are running away from the past. Hallelujah. Always feeling held back and contained. Well, the good news is that God knows where we are. And like Hagar, he wants to speak hope, hallelujah, into our lives. God has a purpose for every mother here today. Hallelujah. When God asks us the same question, where are you, where have you come from and where are you going? We are in pain. We probably know the answer to the first question, but the second question, we have no idea. That's where God's come in. In this particular situation, God tells Hagar, go back, hallelujah, go back and work through the situation because he has a plan for her and her son. Even when you can't see your way out, keep the faith. God is working behind the scene. God is telling somebody today, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Hallelujah. Sometimes, hallelujah, we have to go through the fire to receive the blessings that are on the other side. We are so quick to run from discomfort and pain from relationship that, caught, that seems to be less than our dear. But God sometimes calls us to endure the, higher, the hardship for a higher redemptive purpose. God's purposes 
and peoples are often forged through hardship. Just like a good servant, Hagar obeys God, and she returns to Abraham and Sarah. She goes from expecting mother to a mother raising children. Hallelujah. There will be some conflict between Hagar and Sarah. There will be some conflict between Ishmael and Isaac. There will be some conflict between their descendants. And yet, in all this, God's plan continues to go forth. Now, when we jump over five chapters to chapter 21, hallelujah, a lot has taken place in these 14 years. Hallelujah. God has changed Abram's name to Abraham, Sarah's name to Sarah. But the most important thing of all, Sarah has finally been given the child of promise. Hallelujah. Isaac, as Ishmael grew, the tensions grew surrounding them. Once again, jealousy and his insecurity raises their head. And the Bible says Isaac grew and was weaned. And on the day he was weaned, Abraham holds a feast. But Hagar's son, Hagar's son mocks Isaac at the feast, which prompts Sarah to get all crazy again and tell Abraham they got to go. Hallelujah. They got to go. You got to get rid of this woman. Hallelujah. And her son. Can you see Abraham's minds turning? Hallelujah. Sarah is sure enough mad by now. When we get ahead of God, we can mess things up. Again, Sarah started the whole thing. When we do things out of God's will, out of order, we have to accept the consequences that come with it. Now we see Abraham all stressed out because Ishmael, his son, and he cared that he cared so much about, he had to go through an agonizing real appraisal. When God told him, he had to go, hallelujah. All oh, the things we go through because of the decisions our children make. Earlier I talked about how arrogant Hagar was with Savior. Now there's a problem with Ishmael taunting Isaac. It's amazing, mothers, how some of the traits filter down through our offspring. Now it's, it was Ishmael's fault from them being evicted from the camp. Motherhood uh, involves many sacrifices. Every mother hurts when she sees her children hurt. Hallelujah. We all make mistakes. Hallelujah. We make mistakes. Our children make, make mistakes. And those mistakes often cause us much sorrow. Talking about a bad day. Hagar is having a bad day. One day she was at home. One day she had a home. And suddenly she was homeless. One day she had a job. Then suddenly she was unemployed. One day she had it all. And suddenly she had nothing. One day she was laughing with her son. And suddenly they both was crying. And now, hallelujah, we find Hagar wondering again. She had lost her direction. She had lost her way and her future. The wilderness was no place for a single mother and a child. So regardless of how old a child, her child was, there still was no place for them to be alone. Hallelujah. There were predators in the wilderness. There was thieves in the wilderness. There was uh, bandits in the wilderness. This single mother and her son was now in trouble in a strange place, and her means was running out. It's a heartbreaking picture. Alone in the desert with many of uh, supplies running around with nowhere to go out of water out of options out of hope so she put her son under the bush sits at a distance and waits for him to die she break down and begins to sob she is in a desert crying and her tears are the only water around even though hallelujah the situation seemed hopeless God still knows what he is doing. Hagar is called that slave woman by Sarah. We need to hold on. Hallelujah. 
to what God has promised us. Never give up. Keep trusting, even when it seems like nothing is happening. God wants to cultivate a dependence, hallelujah, on him, a faith in him, despite our circumstances. And the Bible lets us know that he heard her cry. Ain't that good news? He not only sees, he not only intervenes, but he also hears. He hears and he whispers to us, don't be afraid. In verse 18, he says to Hagar, lift the boy up, take him by the hand, for I will make him into a great nation. God's intent is to lift us up, take us, make us, mold us in whatever he wants us to be. God will pick us up if he have to reach way down. God knows the plan he has for us, but we must trust the process. We must trust the God who knows, who sees our pain, who intervenes on our behalf, and he also hears our distress. Proverbs 5, 3 to 6 says, trust in the Lord with all thy heart, hallelujah, and lean not to thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he will direct that path. A beautiful future awaits those who trust in Jesus. Every round go higher and higher. Every wound will be healed. Every pain will be moved. Hallelujah. Every tear will be dried. And crying mothers will cry no more. There never have been a mother on earth who never shed tears. But the Bible says himself that he will wipe every tear. Hallelujah. From our eyes. There will be no more mourning or crying. There will be no more pain. I want to encourage the hearts of mothers today. Some of our children are young. And some of our children are adults. But we find ourselves yet praying and crying out that the Lord will take care of them. Hallelujah. I'm reminded of the songwriter said, who opened doors, hallelujah, that I cannot see. Jesus will. Jesus will. Who make all my decisions for me? Jesus will. Jesus will. It goes on to say, when I'm in trouble, hallelujah. He gives me a song in the night season and all the day long. Hallelujah. Who makes me do right when I would do wrong? Jesus will. Jesus will. I want to encourage you today that Jesus is coming home to carry us home and there will be no more crying. Hallelujah. We won't have to cry no more. Jesus, our answer to every question. He's our solution to every problem. Came down through 42 generations. He healed the sick, hallelujah. He raised the dead. He opened blinded eyes. He made the dumb to talk. He was rejected by man. Died on an old rugged cross on one Friday evening. But early one Sunday morning, he got up with all power, hallelujah, in his hand. And I thank you for that, God. But I got up this morning because he got up. I got up this morning. And I can give God the praise. I can give God the honor and I can give him the glory because I know he is a God who can work it out. All of my hurt, hallelujah, all of my pain, all of my anxiety, all of my abuse, all of my sickness, all of my stress, hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I have victory. I have victory in Jesus. God is my everything. He's my joy, hallelujah, and sorrow. He's my hope for the morrow. He's my rock, hallelujah, in a weary land. He's a shelter in the time of a storm. So cheer up, mothers, hallelujah. Know that God is able to do what he said he'll do. He's going to fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on God, hallelujah, because he won't give up on you. Hallelujah, he's able. Blessed be the name of the Lord, hallelujah. Now to him that is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceedingly joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God.
honk your horn if that word bless you this morning. Hallelujah. All our mothers who are able to come want you to come real quick. Just come to the altar. We want you. As God's blessing upon you and your family, even yea, the mothers to be young women. Might be in the plan of God for you to be a mother one day. We want you to come. We want to be a blessing. Pray God's strength and covering over you. Come on, man. We can hum a little something as our mothers are coming. Hallelujah. Who opened the door that I could not see? Jesus will. Ah, Jesus will. I like that later. Descendants for me, Jesus will. I think y'all like that word, Jesus will. Oh, it's good to see you, mothers. Hallelujah. Just lift your hand. God, we thank you for every mother. We thank you for every woman, every woman of God, every mother, every mother to be. Father, we thank you because you have blessed them. You have blessed their seed. You have blessed their children. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for the word today that reminded us that no matter what we go through, God is still able. Oh, and his promise is yea and amen. Father, we thank you that for the rest of this year, we speak miracles in the lives of these mothers. Hallelujah. You know the desires of their heart. Hallelujah. We call their children blessed this morning. We call their spouses blessed this morning. We call their ministries. Aye, aye, we call their ministries blessed this morning. We call, we call their physical bodies healing. We call it forth. We call it healing for their minds. Hallelujah, God. We curse every foul spirit, every spirit of stress. We curse it. Hallelujah. Every spirit of depression, we curse it. Hallelujah. And we release your favor. We release your favor in their lives. Father, we love you. We appreciate you. We would not be here without a mother. So, God, we thank you today for every mother. Father, the mothers that are there with you, mothers that are going to be with the Lord, we thank you for them this morning. And for every mother that's still yet here with us, God, we bless them today. Hallelujah. Thank you for the word. Thank you for the worship experience. Thank you for the beautiful weather. Thank you for all who are here. We love you. We appreciate you. Bless every mother and mothers to be in Jesus' name. Say amen to that. Ah! Praise God, family. Man, we are so delighted that you joined with us today. Listen, it is our prayer that you were blessed by the Word of God and by the worship experience here at Friendship Baptist Church. We're going to be praying for you this week. Keep us in prayer, and may God continue to bless you. Thank you.